How's it going, Internet Omega here, and today we're going to be talking about being the best Jason that you can be and making mommy happy. These are just a few tips and a few things I've learned over playing the game myself. I've got around 30 hours in it. I'm not saying I'm the best Jason, I'm not saying anything like that, or this is the best way to play Jason, but I just want to pass along some tips that I've learned. Alright, to get started, let's look at Jason's abilities. I'm going to do them in the ways that you get them, like, as far as cooldowns go when the match starts. First ability you have is Morph. And your Morph ability allows you to teleport around the map. It's a little bit finicky, I've realized. Like, if you click directly on top of a car or a house, it'll teleport you kind of to the southeast of it sometimes. Or just somewhere in the vicinity. So the best thing to do is just try to click close to the building or the vehicle or wherever you want to go. That way it doesn't push you out farther and you have to walk even farther to get inside to get to where you want to be. Okay, so the next ability is your sense. Your sense ability allows you to see counselors like out in the open. They glow red or it tells you the building they're in by making the building glow red. And usually whenever I do it, I only use it in like burst, just a little bit that I need. I turn it on long enough to kind of spin the camera around to see if anything is around me and I turn it back off. That way it recharges faster. You don't have to wait as long to get your sensibility again. Next ability is your shift. This is probably like one of the most important ones to me because the counselors are usually faster than you. So what shift allows you to do is to travel over pretty far distances while you're still in your first person view. And it's really good for chasing someone down for a little ways. And you can also hit the same button to come out of it. You don't have to use the full ability. So it makes it really good to just shift in, go a little ways to your right next to the counselor, trying to get almost in front of them. And then when you pop out of it, just grab them and you got them. Okay, one of your last abilities that you get is Stalk. And Stalk's pretty good, I guess. It makes them think that you pretty much left. What it does is... In game, it makes your music, your chase music, stop playing so they don't think you're there. So, if you see somebody off in the distance with your sensibility, you can hit stop and then shift over to them or just walk over there, and they will never even know you're there until they see you or the ability wears off. So, it makes it really good for sneaking around and maybe getting inside of a house behind someone and they don't even see you coming. One of the last abilities that you get is your Rage, and Rage builds up over time based upon normally damage as you take, but it also slowly builds up throughout the match. Uh, what it does is, once it's active, you'll see it in your top left corner. It'll tell you, you know, Rage is active, so that allows your abilities to recharge a little bit faster. And instead of having to tear down doors, you can just walk up to them and hit A and just completely walk through them. Makes a really badass looking Jason too. Okay, I normally start off a match as I walk up and I'll grab the two knives that you see. I normally play as part 3 Jason or part 2 Jason. I'll explain why here in a minute. But once you first start off, grab your two knives and then teleport to either like a car or the phone box. You can tell which one's the phone box. It shows it on the map. And what I do is I trap pretty much everything I can. Normally I trap the battery and the gas for the car. That way I know if they're making progress, pretty much. And I'll also go and trap the phone box. I put two there usually, just to slow them down a little bit more. Because the only problem I've realized with your traps is when you go into your morph ability, because you can hear them pop, so you know they've been set off. And the only problem I've really found with it is hard to tell if they've been set off or not because of the other logos on the map. From what I've been told, it shows up as a solid triangle which you can notice that yourself but they say whenever it's been triggered it kind of breaks the diamond lines on the side and that's how you know which trap has been set off but it's really hard to tell with all the other logos on the map because they kind of cover them up and blur them and that leads me to why i picked part three and part two jason all the jasons start off with five traps except for the part two jason he starts off with seven he may be to me, he seems a bit slower, especially in his shift ability. But you get more traps in case you want to be extra sure that you block everything off. Whenever I first go out and I start playing, 
I'll set up all my traps. Sometimes I'll spawn in near counselors and they'll run away. I usually don't chase them unless I spawn like right on top of them and they're an easy grab. Because I want to make sure I can go across the map and get everything I need to get trapped up to keep them from being able to do anything. Don't really waste your time just yet. We'll be on the hunt very soon. Another thing you can do after you set all your traps and get everything set up is you can teleport to all the power boxes on the map and start breaking them because the darker the camp is, the more fear increases in the counselors. And the more fear they have, the easier they are to see with your sensibility. Which is kind of a good thing because if you got like one or two people at the end of the match and you're like, good grief, where are they? You're teleporting all around the map trying to find them because they have no fear and it makes it harder to see them with your sense. Another tip that I have is don't waste too much time chasing a single counselor. And everybody who's ever played Jason's experienced that, where they take you into a house and they run you in circles around a couch or a table. It gets really aggravating. But you also got to think that there's a lot of other things going on on the map. So just leave them, let them do whatever they want, and go check all the stuff that you have set up in traps. That way, it just makes you more aware of everything that's going on on the map. And that leads me to another thing is check your map often. The reason why is you can tell if the car or the boat's been moved in case a counselor found a way to kind of work their way around your trap. You'll be able to see like the boat going off into the water and you can morph there and hopefully catch them before they get out. So checking your map is very, very important. Next thing is throwing knives. It's really good to get to be very well with the throwing knives. Throwing knives allow you to stop animations. I know some people may not know that, but if someone's climbing into a window and you got a little ways in between you, just throw a knife and it'll hit them and make them stop climbing in the window. Then you can just walk up and grab them. But that also counts for the car or doing any of the mini games or anything like that. It resets the animation and makes it easier for you to catch them. It also does damage to them. Once they get enough damage in them, they'll start to limp and be really, really slow. And then it's a super easy catch. You can get them no problem. Now on to the next thing. Avoiding flare guns and shotguns. There's not really a great way to avoid it unless you use your combat stance. But that only works for the flare gun and not the shotgun. But the best thing that I normally do is when I see somebody pull a gun and they're going to try to shoot me is I try to like use my run ability if I'm playing part 2 or part 3. If not, you just try to zigzag and put things in between you like trees or anything that you're near. And sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And that brings up my next point, your combat stance. Combat stance is good to use when you know how to use it. It helps you tear down doors in less hits if you use your combat stance before you start hitting doors. And it also allows you to block. And you can block pretty much anything but the shotgun, like I said before. So, if you're in your combat stance and somebody swings, you can block it and then grab them and kill them. Or you can slash them, either way you want to do also, whenever you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a counselor, you can entice them into swinging first. What you do is just kind of like walk near them. And when you, when you notice their animation start to swing at you, all you do is step back, they'll whiff it, and you just step back up and grab them. That's an easy kill, but if they have a pocket knife, they'll probably get away, and there's just no way around that. Now, grabbing players. This is something that I've kind of noticed on my own. When you grab someone and they don't have a pocket knife, you know they're struggling with you. If you're standing in too small of an area for your animation, for your kill animation, it won't let you use it. So the best thing is to kind of just walk into a clear spot in a room or outside, not near trees or anything, to be able to use it. And that's another thing, whenever players are grouped up, don't ever grab anyone. Because if any of them's got a weapon, they'll just knock them out of your hand and run away and you'll be standing there stunned like an idiot. All right, the next thing I'm going to talk about is listening for the audio cues of the minigame mess-ups. Now, these are really important because it helps you know what's going on around the map, what people are trying to do. So, first of all, first sound I'm going to go over is gas. The gas sounds like water kind of spilling onto the ground. I'll play it and you can hear it. The next thing is battery. The battery sounds like an electrical shock. It's really easy to notice. The next one is the phone box. Whenever they mess up the phone box, you hear like a dial tone. 
but it's really, really subtle and kind of hard to hear. Then you can tell the car starting because it sounds like a car starting. It's very easy, easy to hear. Now the propeller for the boat, if they mess up the mini game for that, it sounds kind of like tools clanging together or somebody like dropped a toolbox or something like that. I'll play the sound for you. Alright, the last thing that I'm going to go over is do not let the counselors kill you. And there's a few ways to prevent it. You can place traps in your house. Because if you don't know, the way they can kill you is they have to have your mom's sweater, which is in your house. They also have to have Tommy Jarvis on the map. If you can block them getting Tommy Jarvis, that helps a lot too. The only way it works is if they knock your mask off from hitting you multiple times, usually with a machete because that's the best way to do it. Then, they have to have a girl wearing the sweater. She can come up and stun you and Tommy Jarvis has to have a machete. Then he'll come up and interact with you once you're kind of stunned from the sweater and that's how they can kill you. But the best way to prevent it is usually trapping your house or listening for the audio cue of your mom. They've come for me, Jason. Don't let them die me. Don't let them die them. She'll let you know when someone's coming. I had a match like this. They got super, super close to killing me. But luckily, I busted in in time and got a triple kill and saved my own demise. Alright, so that's everything that I can think of about trying to be a better Jason, I guess. But these are just my tips. I'm not saying this is the way to play Jason. You can play Jason however you want to. If you just want to be a full-out hunter, just go for it. You don't have to place traps. You don't have to do all that. But to have a higher success rate, I guess you could say, trap your stuff, pay attention to your map, know how your abilities work, and just have fun. You can also hear the counselors talking. That's another little thing. Whenever you're near them, because it's proximity-based voice, you can hear them talking around you, and sometimes you get good tips of what they're trying to do to you. But that pretty much wraps it up. Appreciate everyone watching, and hopefully some of these tips helped you out. Until the next video, see you later.